Welcome back happy hookers and if you haven't already guessed today we're going to be learning how to crochet the basket weave. Now this is a great stitch to learn if this is the first time you've ever done um, what's known as front post and back post stitches. Essentially rather than placing your hook into the top of the stitch like so what you actually do is you place your stitch around the post either from the front to the back like this or from the back to the front like so and what it does is it creates this really interesting sort of tubular um, stitch which is perfect for when you're starting to get onto more advanced stitches like cabling um, I would say that this is an advanced beginner stitch and you may find it takes you a little bit of time just to get used to it um, but it is really worth it I would consider this a fantastic um, crochet practice these are fantastic drills to get you thinking about um, feeling comfortable with your hook um, working around the post and once you've got that mastered I mean the cabling effects you can do are fantastic okay so for today's tutorial we are going to create a block of three by three so essentially we're going to crochet this together because it'll make it a, a shorter video and I think for a practice piece to get yourself familiar with it and um, this is more than enough for the swapping and changing so to work out how many foundation chains you need to create these are blocks of four so four eight twelve so we've got at least twelve and then whenever you do a beginning foundation row, you're going to need to add three extra chains on. Two will be used at the end, uh, beginning and one will be used at the end. So if this is 12, we need to crochet a 15 chain foundation row. So I'll move these bits out of the way and we will get started with our slip knot and our chain of 15. One, two three four five one two three four five one two three four five it's funny how i chain using it in the um knife hold yet i crochet using it in the pencil hold i just find it a lot quicker that way Okay, so once you have your chain of 15, always best to um, count and double check, but I'm pretty confident that I definitely have a chain of 15. So I'll have a little sip of my tea in case you're catching up. This pattern is worked in uh, double crochets. Sorry, no, this next row is worked in double crochets. So that's US terms. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to count one, two, three. So this is the first two chains that I said that we were getting rid of and we're going to place a double crochet into that third chain along. Like so. Okay. And then we're going to place a double crochet in every chain along. I um, filmed this first row about 10 minutes ago and realised I hadn't pressed play on camera, which um, was a little bit annoying. And I'd uh, been, I mean, I have been chattering quite heavily about the weather here in the UK and how it's absolutely gloomy. It's a perfect day for crocheting and a little bit of maybe a light a fire, pop some Disney Plus on whatever you're interested in at the moment. I've just started watching Grey's Anatomy. Has anyone else seen it? I uh, I think there's about 20, 20 seasons. So it's uh, something a little bit, I say lighthearted. I mean, it's a medical drama. It's not always dealing with uh, the most pleasant of things, but yeah. Okay, so we're nearly at the end. Ta-da! And there is our first row of double crochets. I mean, it is a little bit of a teeny weeny one. So the first one and this chain of two here. And the reason I do two instead of three for um, a double crochet is I just tend to find that they make the edges just a little bit neater and a little bit tighter. Plus, for the rest of the rounds, we'll be putting half double crochets into these end ones. So what you should have if you sort of take these two off is a block of four, a block of four, and a block of four, can you see? And that's where we're going to be placing our stitches. Now, it doesn't actually matter whether you do 
front post for the first block, back post for the second block and front post again, as long as every two rounds you are reversing them. So it could be like we do these ones here. So it's a block that looks like this, or we could do a block that looks like this. I'm going to choose to start with the front post because it is significantly easier to do the front post. And I think let's get started on that. Okay, so we're going to chain two and we're going to turn our work. We are not going to even bother with this post underneath because this we are leaving alone. This is always going to be our edge. So we are concerned with the next four. And at this point, I would take your fingers or your nails, open it up and just think, ah, yeah, I'm familiar with these little posts of the stitch. When they're together, you can't see them, but if you split them up, you can see the gaps in between them and make sure that you, you recognize them because that's the biggest thing here is recognizing the stitch. So you're going to still be do it working in double crochets. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook around the back of this post here. Okay, and that's why it's called a front post because you're going into the front. If that makes sense, you're coming in from the front, even though you're going around the back. I know. Just think front refers to where I stick my hook in. Okay, so you're going around like that and you're going to yarn over and what you're going to want to do is pull it back through like so, so that you then have three loops on your hook. Don't worry if it feels a little bit messy, it's not laying flat, that's completely normal. You're not crocheting into the top of the stitch and then complete a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you might think at the moment, whoa, what's going on? It's obviously raised now, it's bulky. You've crocheted around it, you've created texture. Can you see it's sticking out a lot further? Do not worry, this is absolutely how this stitch works. Okay, so let's try that again. Yarn over, find the next post, okay? I can see that that's that piece and that piece. Insert your hook around it. Yarn over and pull through the post. It does help to have a loose attention here. Don't, you know, be tight on this. Let you, let it pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay. And can you see what it's creating? It's creating a shorter stitch because um, you're coming from the middle of the stitch. So it's creating almost a stitch that's, if you'd have added a half double crochet on to the top of the stitch, it would be meeting it somewhere like that, which is why we do half double crochets at the end. Okay, so we've got two more of these front posts to do. So find your next one, which is here. Yarn in, I mean hook in, yarn over, pull through nice and loose with the tension so that you're able to pull back around yarn over two, yarn over through two. Okay, last one of this block. In from the front, around the post, pull it back through and then complete the double crochet. And then here's a good opportunity to take it out, square it up and can you see what it's done is it's, it's almost just continued the post of the stitch and added a little bit more height on it. So the next four, are going to be our back posts and these are a little bit more challenging than the front um, which is why we've started with a row of two blocks of front so the first thing i want you to do is make sure you can definitely identify the four posts you're going to be working into one of the best ways to make sure you've got it um, right is to look at this end here's our little end chain take away these four here okay so i definitely know yeah i've got four there that i'm going to be working into so this time when we yarn over, we're going to be wanting to go around the back and bring our hook. Can you see I've come in this way and I'm going to go across the post, trying to show you as best I can. And essentially I've taken my hook, can you see, and I've gone around it like that. Some people find it easier that once they've gone, let me try that again. I'll give you an alternative view because I want you to really get understand this. Once you've gone in and you've found the right place to go in and you've gone across and you've gone back, some people find it easy to turn their work over 
so that they can yarn over and see where they're pulling through. Can you see how I did that? I turned it all the way over and I'm actually going to complete the stitch. Oh, as I lose my, lose my loop, complete the stitch from the back. Now I'm going to flip it, can you see? And I'm going to make sure, okay. So what's actually happened here is it's preserved the top of the stitch on the front. Can you see? We've picked it up and crocheted into the back, preserving this little front bit. And that is what creates, can you see, this little textured ledge because it's pushing these. I mean, these are quite big. Look, I can get my hook and really pull it down. So it's creating these horizontal ledges. So we're going to try that one more time. We're going to yarn over, we're going to work out which is the next one, so that's this one. We're going to go in from the back, across, and then back out around the post, like so. And then we're going to yarn over and pull it through and complete our double crochet. There we go. And we've got two more to do around the back. So if you do start to feel confident without turning your work over, you could go in like this um, and you and you could pull through and you could be looking at it. But I do think it's a good idea to look at where that is coming out. So if I yarn over into the next one, turn it over, see where I'm coming back out, yarn over, yarn over. Okay, so then you've created your four and it's going to feel strange because you've got almost like now like a little mouth with like, you know, an upper and a lower lip. Hello, <laughs> talking to you because you've essentially crocheted out of the back of it and you might be thinking, whoa, what's going on? But as we build the rows up, it will feel like it's got more dimension. So the beauty of this little swatch is after that little bit more challenging um, back post, crochet we're going back into the front now back into the front there's a lot of backs and fronts anyway so we've identified here we go we've got our four here and you can see how they're different because you can actually see these little horizontal stitches now where you went around so if we look at the difference between this one and this one there's a very clear difference in the stitches so that's also another helpful identifier that this is our next stitch so we're going to yarn over and we're going to go nicely in the front and create our last four double crochets. So popping it in, I do like this one. This is a really nice one. If you create anything in the round that you're cabling, it's really good because all of your uh, cables become front post crochets because there's no turned rows. Okay, so we've got one more left to do. Really make sure you find that little extra a couple of chains and that you don't go around them. We've got, you know, we're going around this very last one here with our last double crochet. And then to finish it off, we want to identify the top of that chain. So can you see, I've got a couple of stitches just here. I'm going to pop into like so. If I can make sure I show you that without, there you go. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to just yarn over and pull through all three to create a half double crochet. And if you can see that it's a perfect height for this. So now we need to turn our work and create another row, but it's going to be another row that looks exactly like this. Yeah, it's going to be another set where these carry on. And this is going to be another set where we create another little ledge. However, we are now working in the reverse. So we're going to chain two. So for this one, we're not going into the front of it because we want it to look exactly the same. And because we're working on the back of the stitch, we actually need to go into the back like so. Can you see, let's do a back one back post. Take our hook out, turn it around. And can you see by creating a back post in the back of this stitch, 
it's essentially the same as a front post when we turn it around. So it's getting familiar with the that concept of the reverse of the stitches. Okay, so we need to do another back into the next one. And this is where you might start to think, I have no idea where I'm going. Okay, just take, take a breath, slow it down. Quickest way to work it out, you can quite clearly see these four front posts in the middle. So I can take my nail and cap off from there straight away. Okay, look at the top of the stitches. We've got one, two, three, four, five, yeah? That's because I've just gone into one, two, three, I've just gone around this post here, yeah? That's the one I've just worked. So there are actually one, can you see, I'm gonna weave in and out of them. I've put one at the back, like I would, um, you know, um, if I was doing a running stitch, one, two, and we've got one there, and then my hook is just touching this. So I know, okay, actually, this one here is my next one. That was my end stitch. That was the one we've just completed. You can get confused when you start to look at the tops because we're so used to looking at the tops. So we're going in here. Another thing to notice is if you take your hook and you just gently pull to the side, look where the gap is being made in the stitch. Can you see? Um, when I pull, there's quite obviously a gap here appearing. And I use that often because that is one of the easiest ways to think, oh, okay, this is the stitch I haven't yet used. That's quite clearly one connected because it's pulling away from it. So often if I'm, you know, thinking, okay, what's the next stitch? I'll just do a little tug. Oh, right, okay. And actually tugging. Oh, I'm ready to go in. And there is the stitch that I want to go into the next time. So we'll try that method here. Tug, can you see, it creates a bigger gap for me to go around and pick up that post. And we know we've got one more left. Okay, so we tug and there is our last back post. And what that's done is created us two ledges this side and continued with our verticals here. Now this is the one where we had a ledge on the other side. So actually now we need to continue these verticals which will create a ledge on the back. So again, working out where you're going is a great idea. I can see very obviously the four posts that look very different to these side ones. However, where are we going in here? There's a lot going on in here. Um, there's also another row immediately behind that I need to make sure that I'm not picking up. So these posts are actually quite small posts. If I go in there and I come back there, can you see? I'm going to try and make it so that I've pulled this ledge back. Can you see how small these bits are? These are the just the very tops and that is what we're picking up. You don't want to be going through and then going through this little ledge here. You only want to be going through this bit and coming back. So you've almost got a tiny bit of a stitch. I'm just going to do the same where I just run my hook through so that you can, sorry, that you can see those ledges there. Okay, so front post, there we go. And I would say a trick with this is rather than wanting to go stab it through, turn it around, pick it up, is now that the this is almost more at the front and this is at the back, try and feel like you can confidently just place it in like that around. Sometimes that could be just actually curving the work a bit and then I can feel comfortable that I'm just picking up the front of that post like so. Let's try that method again. I'm going to curve it and I'm just going to, there you go, it very easily just pops through the front of that post. Well, I don't think I did a proper double crochet there, did I? Few, uh, distractions. Let's try that again. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's try the tilted method. Tilt it like you're, you know, breaking a cracker or whatever, you, chocolate bar, <laughs> anything really. 
and that will help push that front post and we've got one left here to do good time to check that you're on track yep i can see my end i can see my very obvious four that look the same and thankfully i've now got one definitely left here to do so we've done our front and now it's left to do four at the back so again, we're going around, do you remember, just that back bit there. These definitely are more challenging. Where you will find the biggest challenge is putting your hook in and picking this up and feeling comfortable that you're pulling it through. And this is where awareness of where the hook is tilted and the hook is turned. I often put my finger here to hold that when I go in. I pick the work up and I sort of spin I pick I sort of spin it down and then pull it and then the hook comes back up. So I'm making sure that I'm not losing. So I'm popping it in. Can you see? I'm turning it over and pulling it through. Like that. And then I've got one more back post to do, making sure that I work out okay. Let's identify that tiny little chain two there. That is my last one that I'm doing. Okay, time to half double crochet. Okay, we've got one, two, it's a tiny little stitch just there. Oh, I hit the camera then. And then a half double crochet. And there you have your first two sets of your basket weave stitch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to complete another two rows in the reverse so that you can see. Okay. So we're going to turn our work and we're going to chain two and get started. Chain two. Okay. Rather than just mindlessly going okay and now it's this and this and this what i want to do is make you feel more comfortable i can use that massive long hair out of the way more comfortable working out your identifiers you know it's time to change your stitches around when you've got two clear ledges here in the middle of a square okay so these from the front all look like front posts and these all look like back posts Okay, front is horizontal and back is this. I'm trying to think of a cool way to identify that. So now that we want to swap these around, we want the next square here to look like these and we want the next square like that to look like these and this middle one to look like these. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it up. So now we're going to be working back post. So back, front, back. Does that make sense? Back, front, back. And I will write this down for you so that you can um, remember the, the right way because it will change obviously when you reverse it. So back, front, back. So we're going into the back for these four. We're double crocheting into the back because we want to swap it up. When you're changing it, you're doing the reverse of what you would do to carry the row on. If we wanted this row to carry on, we'd do some more fronts because fronts look like that, but we want to swap it up, so we change it to backs. Okay, so there's my four. A bit more challenging on the backs. Okay, these look like backs. Let's imagine like the back of your bra. I know there's probably men around, but some men wear bras. That's Imagine that's the back of your bra because you've got your straps across. So it looks like a back, but I want to change it to a front. I want it to look like this. So I'm going to front post into it. And when we front post, we place a hook in the front. Can you see there? I've completely picked up far too many stitches because I've not properly gone through it. So I need to make sure... That I'm definitely only bringing through, there we go, that yarn. So I'm going into the front, I'm doing the torque if I need to just see where I'm at. There we go. Let's do one more front. 
I love front posts because they're just the best, aren't they? So easy. Okay, last one to do here. Oh, I lost that one. It is a little bit more intense and a little bit fiddly um, than a lot of stitches, but it is also one of the most satisfying stitches to do. Okay, so can you see we've now gone from ledges to creating these. So now with this one, we're going to change it so that we create ledges. So it's a back post. Yeah, making sure I'm just, I had to turn mine over just to check there. I was going into the back properly of that one. Okay, so I'm in. Yep, turning it over, checking it. Surprised the cats haven't been to see me today. I think it's because it's the afternoon they're uh, having a snooze somewhere. Okay, one more, making sure we're, look, we're identifying that little bit at the end we need to exclude. And the very last. That was a little bit more challenging. A very, oh yeah. Oh, I just got it. Whew. I didn't think it was going to pop through them. The last one. And then tilt that back. Give it a squash so I can see where my tiny little, this is what you get when you chain too small at the end. What I've done is I've created quite a big chain followed by quite a small chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hook out and I'm going to, there we go, get my room first. And then what I'm going to do is now pop my half double crochet into that little space there. Okay, last round for this sampler and then you will have created a block of three by two. So this is the one where we want it all to look exactly the same as this, yeah? want it to look exactly the same because we want two ledges again. We always do two rows that look the same but because we are turning we still have to reverse our stitch order okay so because we did back post front post back post we now do front post back post front post because i want my front to look like a front so i'm going into there I realise I'm using a lot of terminology, but I'm just trying to find lots of ways for you to saying things like I want my front to look like a front. So I do a front. One of these things, whether I've done 10 different ways to think about it or explain it, one of them, I think, hopefully will cement it in so that you'll think, ah, oh, OK, yep, yep, I remember that. And we're now swapping that. If you do one stitch and you think, oh, no, that's not the right way. Pull it down and pop it in the other way. Pop it in from the front to the back. If I went in here and did a front post stitch like this. Oh no, I think my Alexa's going off. Alexa, stop! I had a time on. I think, oh no, that's not right. Oh no, I need another ledge. Oh, just do that. It took like 10 seconds, if that. Okay, I'm going in from the back. So muddling your way through it, it's not a bad thing because you've started to train your brain to identify what the stitches look like. And I think that that's such a key thing when we start to do cabling and textures. You don't need to read the pattern and think, oh, right, I'm doing back from back and follow it without any intuition or, you know, awareness of what the end product looks like by now i'd like to think that you can definitely put the wrong stitch into the next square like i just did and very clearly see oh no i should have been coming in from the back not the front okay this is a front i want it to look like a front i'm going to go into the front okay so three more front stitches and we have finished our small sampler piece. And we should feel extremely proud of ourselves because, I mean, how many people get the opportunity to spend half an hour with me learning how to crochet the basket we stitch and hopefully come, come out with something that looks very proud. Okay, let's find that little little bit at the end here. Yeah. Let me see, 
in there I've got a chain that I'm going to attempt to dig my hook into and I'm going to half double crochet and look at that look at that let's have a zoom in look at that okay let's edit, show it against this one because the light's a little bit better so can you see this is um and we can turn it around even better turn it around like that so it looks exactly like the center of these two so we've got the fronts and the backs the backs and the fronts horizontal sorry horizontal and vertical and as we continue the combo of those with blocks of four in two rows at a time, you get this lovely textured stitch, fully reversible, complete with cat hair. <laughs> um, I sometimes suffer from a little bit of a loopy bit here. Can you see I've got a couple of extra, extra bits. Um, even my tension's not perfect. I've got a couple of little extra. There's definitely quite a big loopy one there. So what I don't want you to suddenly think is, oh my gosh, I need them to all look exactly perfect. Look, we've got three that are pretty okay. And then there's this giant loop. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't matter. As you get more comfortable with the stitch, um, even this isn't something that I regularly do. So thank you ever so much. I would love to see your basket weave creations, even if it's just a little square like this. You should be so proud of yourself for what you've created. So please do tag me on over on Instagram. Uh, once again, thank you to um, one of our top subscribers, Jennifer, for this fantastic suggestion. Um, I really hope you've mastered this. And next time, not necessarily the next video, but one of the next times, let me just pop that back, we will be using these stitches to start to do some cabling. And I've got a little sneak peek for you to show you a cabled mitten that I worked on recently. Now, I don't think we're going to fully jump into the cabled mitten, but can you see how this cable, these are front posts. These are these vertical ones. We've got them here and we've got them weaving in and out. And actually, look, can you see? The hook goes straight under that because they're crisscrossing over. These are... So we'll start to do a, sample, a great sample piece with some cabling in just to, um, you know, start to bring some more complex patterns into the channel. Um, this is a mitten that I freestyled. I think I can kind of remember the pattern. Um, but when I got to about here, I certainly was like trying it on and thinking, oh, a few less stitches here. So I do need to formalise it, do a little bit tech editing, ready for a pattern. So once again, thank you ever so much for joining me. Happy hooking and I'll see you soon. Bye.